God bless you, everyone. Let's make sure. Bless you, everybody. Good to see you guys. Blessings to you, Elder. It's good to see you, my dear. Right, if you're on, I want you just to say hi so we know that you're on. Can't really see anything. God bless you, Sister Tara. You can tag this page. Tag somebody. Have so be menacing. Giving you a word of encouragement. And if you can hear us, just go ahead and say, put a heart or something to let us know. If you can hear us well. <laughs> can you guys hear us? Amen. Come on, say hi. Say hi, go ahead, tight, tight, tight. Tight, tight, tight. All right, we're gonna wait for a few, about a minute or so. Go ahead and tight, as many people as you can. Amen. Can you guys hear us? If you can, just go ahead and let us know in the message box. It's the only thing that we can see. But let us know in the message box if you can hear us. Amen. Just waiting for a few more seconds for the more to come on. Uh, I want to try to attempt to sing a large screen, but I'm going to say I might be cracking. <laughs> Amen. Just waiting for a few more seconds for the more to come on. All right, come on board, come on board. Good to see everybody on the live. It's live at five right now. Words of, Words of encouragement. Let's come on board. Come on board. This is Tuesday. Amen. Amen. This is my part right here. That's how. All right. Come on board. A few more seconds and then Pastor Jeremy is going to come on. We just wanted to say hi before I leave and give it over to him. Amen. And then share with him. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Yes.
Yes. All right, keep it going. Keep it going. Amen and amen. It's good to see everyone on this live. Again, if you are here, if you can go ahead and type something on this comment so that we know that we are seeing. Oh, there you are. I am so sorry. Everybody's been commenting, but uh, it was not going down. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't going, going down. So I was over here waiting for everyone to respond. I'm so sorry. It's right here. Um, we would like to say hi to Sister Tara of the day shop. <laughs> Sister Sam, God bless you, sweetheart, in Texas. Good to see you on the live. Sister Candace in Kentucky, good to see you, sweetheart. Sister Bridget, uh, Brother Joey, it's good to see you. Um, it's good to see Sister Shani. It's good to see Brother Lindsay and Sister Ashley. It's good to see you on this live. Brother Afi, God bless you, my dear. Uh, good to see every one of you. Who else? Let me see. There you go. I gotta scroll all the way down. It's good to see. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. We can't eat. Day. Good to see you guys. Uh, Sister Candice, you, 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 you wasn't able to hear me singing because I wasn't trying to attempt because of my voice. <laughs> didn't want to crack. Uh, I didn't want to crack the crack while I'm singing, but um, but I, I'll, I'll be resting it for this Sunday. So when I get ready to minister, Brother Sean, good to see you, Brother Sean. Sister Nemo, hi, my dear. Hi, baby David, God bless you, sweetheart. Hi, mommy, God bless you. All right, so we are so excited to be here as always. Um, Pastor is going to be ministering. I, I, I tagged him today. Uh, so that I can rest my voice because you all know that I can't just stay still and I get excited And so I'm going to end up losing my voice for Sunday um, But Pastor Jeremy is going to be talking about or continuing. Yes, okay, good Pastor Jeremy is going to be continuing um, The message with Isaac and Abraham It's going to be something very powerful if you haven't watched the live this past Sunday, I recommend you watch the live this past Sunday. Um, that is part two of Fire in the Altar. And I also want to let you know there's part three. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. There's part three, Fire in the Altar. Fire on the Altar, not in the Altar, but Fire on the Altar, part three. That's this week's Sunday, and it's called The Fire Never Sleeps. It's going to be a very powerful, powerful message as God has always and is always using us to present a word to his people. But today or tonight, um, the Lord has given us to continue um, on Abraham and Isaac. And I and I know that it's going to be something extremely powerful. Uh, but before Pastor Jeremy comes on, I would like to say something that the Lord was, uh, the Lord has showed me last night. Um, and uh, it, it was just such an amazing time because uh, the, the, the title of my message this past Sunday was what will you sacrifice on the altar to gain? And as I was, as I was uh, 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 in the shower, it always happens in the shower. I love it because time you just get to relax. But as I was in the shower, um, the Lord showed me that uh, in order for him to fill, you got to let out you gotta release and that's the only time when he's able to fill and many times we get to this place where we're so caught up or filled up with the world we cannot be filled up with god yes every time when we're when we're filled with the world you cannot be filled with god all right and this is what the lord is telling us tonight and, and he's telling us every day that you have to empty yourself and that's what the lord is showing me pastor uh yeah last night that you have to, and that's one thing that I was going to talk about today, but I'm going to let you do it because God has a word as well. Um, but the Lord said that you have to empty yourself in order for him to fill you. All right. And um, open up that light, sweetheart, real quick. Um, and, and, but that's the thing that we have to understand is we have to be emptied. That means nothing that is uh, 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 no sin 
or uh, we, we cannot be filled with the world and want to be filled with God at the same time. That cannot happen. We have to, we will either be filled with the world or be filled with the Holy Ghost. We'll be filled with the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, okay? So God is telling us today that we have to choose what we uh, what we want to put in to our lives. And, and I'm telling you this, one of the greatest things, and like I would say, I was talking about how the anointing makes a difference. I'm talking about the Spirit of God that is inside a person that makes all the difference. And this is what God does. When you are, when you release and when you sacrifice the things of the world out of you, God is able to pour into you His fire, His wisdom, His knowledge, His spirit, His anointing upon us, His fire upon us so that we while the fire is inside of us we're able to now release and let the fire of god flow out of us to his people and back in again when we come back in and we get to uh communing with god and just loving on god but it takes sacrifice it takes a dying and so i want to encourage you all i'm going to bring pastor up right now before i continue but i want to encourage you all you all to continue to die to self, to continue to die to your flesh so that the Holy Spirit can move mightily in your lives. These are the times when you want the Holy Spirit to move mightily in your lives. And I want to share that to say this really quickly as pastor is getting ready to come up. But yesterday, um, I mean, I'm sorry, this morning I had, an, I had, a, I had a text with, 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 with a man who was dealing with demonic powers. I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, new age. I'm talking about witchcraft. I'm talking about um, uh, believing in aliens and UFOs and, and witches and all, it, it's, it's, it's called the new age movement. I'm sure you have, you've, you've heard of that. And I knew already that it was something that was demonic and um, that he was dealing with. And, and then he started to explain some things that had happened in his life, and I'm not going to mention this man's name, but um, it's, he started to explain of some things that is happening in this life. I want to tell you, I mean, even his body, he, could, he he's getting restless, he can't move, he, he can't control his muscles. It's, it's like that all of a sudden, he said it happened for a, a month ago, but 10 years, for 10 years, he was in this new age movement. I'm saying all that to say this, that the Lord can work through text messages. Because it's not you. It's the Spirit of God that operates through you. And God is able to touch him right where you're at, where you're not able to do anything. And this is why it is important that you have to empty yourself from the world. You have to empty yourself from your own desires. You have to empty yourself from uh, sin, uh, addictions. You have to empty yourself because if you don't empty yourself, you cannot be a true help to someone. And God wants you free. Because the Lord says that where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. So He wants you free. And when you are free, you're able to set people free. And that's what God is doing right now. So I wanted to remind you that how important it is for you to uh, keep your life in right standings with God. And for you to pour out yourself and lay the things that are not, not supposed to be inside of you on the altar. And so that the Holy Spirit can work through you. Amen. I'm going to bring Pastor up, but I want to pray in the name of Jesus. Father God, I speak, Father God. I speak a blessing over these airways and over every person that comes to hear your word, mighty Spirit of God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for your spirit, for your blessings, for your hand, for your covering upon us all. And Father God, we speak to every person, every person, every, every Every believer, Father, on this page, God. And Lord, I declare healing and freedom and restoration and deliverance, God, for your people. Lord, I pray that we will remove everything that is not of you, God. We will pour it out, Father God, Lord, as a living sacrifice, Father God. So we can be a living sacrifice for you, Father God. We'll pour it out and sacrifice it on the altar, God, that you may abide in us and live in us, Father God. So, Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your messenger, Pastor Jeremy, tonight. And Lord, we thank you for every hearer of the word. In Jesus' mighty, majestic name, 
Amen and amen. And we rebuke every spirit of demonic power, every negativity off of this page right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Listen, God bless you. I'm going to be, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to listen to the message. You guys be blessed. Open up your heart. God has a word. Amen. Amen, amen. This is Pastor Cassio Sharon. Um, it is a, a delight to be here with all of you um, on here. And I believe that the Lord wants to share something with each and every one of you to encourage you. Today, um, right now, is our uh, Tuesday Live at 5. And, and Pastor Cassio, thank you for that, uh, for that uh, intro and also for praying for us. As, as she shared, um, we're going to be continuing or taking... taking um, our lead from this past Sunday's message, so powerful. Um, if you were blessed by it, I want you to go ahead and message of, of on here how, how you were blessed by that message. I know personally um, it was it was a powerful, powerful move of God. Um, and um, I, I'm amazed because sometimes I am also privy to uh, what uh, Pastor Cassie is going to minister as I, as I help her to put sometimes um, get her... Um, paperwork together and so I get to uh, and also uh, help her out with her slides so I get to kind of get a preview of what what her notes are um, and and then to hear what the Lord is actually speaking um, I'm amazed at how he flows um, through her so mightily and so um, it was a, a powerful powerful message and I want to um, kind of pick up from from there um, from where she was uh, headed into and and share a word of encouragement with all of you um, but before we get into that, and, and thank you for opening in prayer, my love, um, I want to share some amazing facts with you. Um, how, how many of you know that when God says something is going to happen, and it happens exactly how he says it, yes? And we understand that God is an amazing God, and, and that uh, when when God sets things up, well, the, exactly the way that he sets it up, it's going to happen the way he says it. And so I want to read to you from... Um, a prophecy spoken in the, the book of Zechariah. This is in the Old Testament before that Jesus had come. But it's amazing how it pertains to um, close to our day because it happened in the 1900s, the actual fulfillment of it. Um, and it says this in Zechariah 13 and 8 through 9. It says God gives a perfect predict. Uh, it, it says that two thirds of the people in the land, speaking of Israel, in the land will be cut off and die. Okay, says the Lord, but one third will be left in the land. I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. And I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. And they will call on my name and I will answer them. And I will say, these are my people. And they will say, the Lord is our God. Now, I don't know how many of you know your history, but um, in the time of Hitler, during the during the time of the Nazis, um, did you know that two thirds of the Jewish people were actually killed during the Holocaust? So Hitler was trying to totally eradicate the Jewish people, um, and yet one third survived. Okay, out of the total populace of the Jewish people, or the people of Israel. Um, and here's the amazing part: God said that that in this time that they would be refined as gold. Now, this is so interesting to me because did you know that the temperature in which gold melts at is 1,948 degrees, okay? The reason why that is so um, so interesting, and, 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 and I am a, a person who loves to dive into this prophetic, um, um, dive into how, when God says things that, that literally there's clues and mysteries, as, as Paul calls it, mysteries in, in, in um, the things of God, that when it is revealed, it brings light to how God's perfect plan is being, re, um, is being um, fulfilled. And so he, God said that in this time when the two thirds um, would be um, taken out and one third would be preserved, that, that it, he would be bringing them through the fire to purify them. Um, and that they would be refined as silver is, is purified just like gold, okay? Gold, it is purified, or, or, the, or the moment that it melts, again, is at 1,948. Isn't it interesting how in 1948, 
that the Holocaust ended and one third of Israel returned back to their land and became a nation. So let me tell you, when God says something, that, that, that's the Bible coming alive. And, and, and these are the kind of things that, that helps to build my faith. And, and, and this should encourage you as a believer to know that what God has said in his word, the word of God is truth. You can base your life upon it and to know that the, that the very promises of God that he states for your life, he will uphold it. To see the details that he places um, upon, upon his people, that literally God is, God is my God. He is amazing, and yet, and yet it's all in his word. And so the reason why God allows this to happen is to speak to us, to help us understand that what we are going through, what we face in our lives, that he is there with us. Amen? Now on Sunday, Pastor Cassie spoke about the fire on the altar and, and she asked this question. This was the title of the, of, of the message. She said, what would you sacrifice on the altar to gain? What would you sacrifice? And she spoke about the time when Abraham offered Isaac up to the Lord and, and how these things took place as a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Now, when Abraham, now, now I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little bit back to kind of point how, point out how it is so, um, how all of this points towards what Jesus would do for us and understanding this in, in, in our own lives. Okay. When Abraham, um, in fact, his, his nephew Lot, he was captured by the king of Elam. Um, this is coming out of Genesis 14. You can study it, um, if you want to go back and, and read this story, but it's interesting because God gave Abraham the ability to conquer this king uh, who had taken his nephew um, captive. And in doing so, God blessed Abraham to, with, to acquire a lot of wealth. And immediately after this, we read where Abraham met with a man uh, who was known as uh, both as a king and a priest of the Most High God. And he was called, and I, I'm going to say he was called this, um, and I'll explain a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll explain right after I say this. Um, he was called Melchizedek. And the reason why I say he was called it and not named it is because Melchizedek was more of a title rather than a name. When you take the Hebrew word, the two, the two Hebrew words that make up Melchizedek, Melech means king and Zedok means righteous. And so we see here how Melchizedek is the king or represented as a king of righteousness. And, and, and Abraham meets with this king of righteousness in the valley of the kings, or what is known as the Kedron Valley. Okay. Now, I'm, I, I tried to um, print up a, a, a picture of this, but I want to show you how, how interesting this is, where the Kedron Valley is. And so I hope that you can see this. I'm going to try to get it in that, in that screen as best as you can. Now, I circled the Kedron Valley. Let me try to get it into the screen here. I circled the Kedron Valley, and you'll notice that it's right next to David's palace, which is also the area of where the Temple Mount is. And this is also known, the city of David is known as Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And I circled the Kedron Valley for reason, okay? So I want you to see that. Kedron Valley is that valley that comes right there by Jerusalem. So this is the place where this is taking place, where, where when, when the Bible is talking about where Abraham met with Melchizedek. It was in this valley, which would become known as Jerusalem. Now, this is one of the reasons why Jerusalem is so important um, uh, um, to God is because much of what was prophesied and, and God, for some reason, God has um, this area of Jerusalem, um, a special place, um, because even when Jesus returns, this is where he's coming to. And so here in this in the Valley of the Kings or in the Kedron Valley, uh, this is where the king of Salem, because Melchizedek was also known as the king of Salem. So the king of righteousness was it was the king of Salem. Now, the word Salem actually means Shalom. And Shalom is translated peace. And so we have the righteous king. This, this is why it's amazing, because uh, Melchizedek is a righteous king of peace. And, and this is a foreshadowing. Um, of or as as uh, Bible scholars would will, will, will call it an anthropomorphic um, telling of, of of how like how this 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 being or this king showed up to Abraham um, was actually like Jesus in uh, um, previous in previous times and and how Jesus is Melchizedek um, that that he is a righteous king the Lord or the owner of peace 
um, and and it's amazing how this all ties in to what what God has spoken, and also how um, I'm going to read to you from Genesis 14 and 18. It says, "Now Melchizedek, the king of Salem, was a priest of the Most High God." So we have not only a king, but a priest, and this was unheard of in in in, in anywhere in the in history. Okay, that you have both a king and priest, except for Jesus, who was a king and priest, and says and and it says that that brought um. Now, Abraham brought to him, or he brought to Abraham, watch this, bread and wine. Why? Why would, why out of all the things that a king would bring to Abraham, why would he bring up bread and wine unless this was <coughs> Jesus bringing, who was the bread of life and also his blood, which was represented. Uh, this, this is a, this is a foreshadowing of, of, of the communion. And, and, and it's amazing how, how this is in, in Genesis and, that's why I don't understand how people say that the Old Testament, that's all for old stuff. And, and you can't understand the new um, without without understanding the old. And so it's amazing. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but these are the kinds of things that um, I, I really um, love to get into. And it builds our faith. And so this should encourage you. And, and so um, this is also why in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 10, it says that God designated him, Jesus, to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Or just as Melchizedek, okay, was, and this is a reference from the New Testament to the Old, how Jesus falls right in line with who Melchizedek is, okay? And there, and, and it's amazing how um, this ties in to Abraham, in, in where Abraham understood the tithe, and how this first tithe that, that Abraham brought um, took place right there in Jerusalem. Now, there's a reason for this, and, 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 and I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Now, going to what Pastor Cassie was teaching on, on Sunday in Genesis 22, um, I'm going to read this to you. It says, uh, sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. <clears throat> Excuse me. He said, Abraham, and um, called, called, um, God called. Yes, he replied, I am here, or here I am. And, and he said, take your son, your only son. Amazing how he uses this, this term, okay? He says, take your son, your only son. Now, I got a question to y'all. Was Isaac... Abraham's only son? Answer is no, because remember, before Isaac came, um, Abraham had already had Ishmael. So why is it that God says, take your son, your only son? There, there, it, it, it's a Hebrew, it's a Hebrew word that is used here that, I, that I'm going to bring up um, just in, in a little bit. Let me, let me co uh, continue reading this. He says, take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac. I love how he says that. He's like, I'm not talking about Ishmael. I'm talking about Isaac. Yes, Isaac. No, uh, uh, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. This is all important. I want you to pay attention to the clues here. It says, go to the land of Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on the one on one of those mountains, which I will show you. I love how God says, uh, um, I'm not even going to tell you which one it is, because he knows how we as human beings are, because if God reveals everything to us, many times we leave him behind and we try to work God's will on our own. And so this, this is the thing that we, we got to understand is, is God doesn't always give us all the information. He lets us know what we need to know for that moment so that we can follow him and we don't leave him behind because he just knows how we are. Now, this word, take your son, your only son, is a Hebrew word, yakid. And yakid actually by definition means the one that you would rather keep for yourself. Okay. Now, I want you to understand how powerful this word yakid is because we see this again in the New Testament in John 3, 16, where we hear the same words that are said, um, for God so loved this world that he gave his one and only son. Same like what he told Abraham. He said, Abraham, take your son, your only son. God then, God then says, this is how much I love you. I'm going to give you my yakid. And so Jesus, this was a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. And Jesus was God's yakid, the one in whom he would rather keep. He gave, he gave his son to set us free. Now, this is powerful because, because also he says, now take your yakid, your, your, your Isaac, yes, your son, the one in whom you love. And he said, I want you to take him to the land of Moriah. Now, why the land of Moriah? Now, I'm going to bring back my 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 my, my picture here um, because we're going to tie this in to why Jerus Jerusalem was so powerful and how this all ties in to Jesus Christ. Because in my picture here again, 
if you'll notice at the top, I'm, I'm gonna circle it for y'all so you guys can see this um, easier. Hopefully I can get it in, uh, you can see it circled in orange here. All right, so notice that same picture, the Kidron Valley, and notice what mountain is right above Jerusalem. Now God tells Abraham, I want you to take your Yaquid, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Y'all see that? Okay, so this is this is important. I want you to understand here. This was going to be the place in which Abraham was going to offer his son. He says, go and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of those mountains that I'm going to show you. And, and so here we can see how Moriah ties right into, or this place in which God, this, this prophecy, I, I, I'm amazed at, at, at how when God was leading Abraham, Abraham didn't know that this was going to tie into to his own to, to God's son. And yet, and yet here we see that the tie into this place where the king of Salem or the king of the king um, where, where, where this this foreshadowing of Jesus. And then we see the very mountain because I want you to see something um, as well, because they're there on, on another one of my maps of Jerusalem. I want you to see where out of Jerusalem. OK, I want you to see in, in, in this in this area right here. This is a picture of um, Jerusalem or actually the city of and in this area close by where um, the mountain Moriah would be we see where Golgotha oh sorry on this side let me come over here on this side right here where Moriah would be up here we see the place where God's Yaquid was sacrificed for you and me near the Mount Moriah the same place where God had told Abraham to take his Yaquid too. This is amazing because, and, and, and we see how when going back to Melchizedek, Abraham understood that wherever his tithe was placed, that would be, that would be a place of blessing. That would be a place where, uh, of, of, of truly where, where, where blessing would be. And so we understand now that God always had a plan for Jerusalem, for this place in which we don't always understand why God is calling us or telling us to, to do certain things, even if it sounds um, outrageous, like sacrificing your son. I mean, that's outrageous. But little did little did we know, we, we don't always know God's plan. God had a reason and a plan for why he sent Abraham there. Because here's the spiritual principle. The spiritual principle is wherever the tithe is given, it becomes a place of blessing. And so this is where we can see the Melchizedek, how he ties in. Uh, literally to the story of Abraham. Now, let's continue in this story with Abraham and, 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 and see something amazing in this. Abraham says, stay here to, to his, when he comes to the Mount Moriah, he says to his uh, servants who, who came along with him, stay here with the donkey for the boy and I will travel a little further. We're going to worship here and then we're going to come right back. And I love I love Pastor Cassie how you brought up that whole the whole fact that that Abraham spoke as he says we're going to come back not just me we coming back so uh, Abraham actually um, knew that that somehow God would uh, would would, would um, that they would both come back and Hebrews uh, eleven in, in in the Hall of Faith actually gives us a clue of 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 what was going through Abraham's mind and I'm going to pull this up really quick because I want to read this to you that that the reason why he said that the that we are both going to come back is this. In the Hall of Faith, it says, it was by faith, in, in Hebrews 11 and 17, it says, it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. For Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only Yaquid, his only son, Isaac, even though God had told him. Now, this is the amazing part, okay? Because many times we will hold God to a promise. My God, I knew you were going to speak something powerful through this. Many times we are holding God to a promise and we don't even hold ourselves to the promiser when he's speaking. God knows how to keep his promises. And this is the thing that we got to understand is many times we're holding on to God's promise. But when God is, when the promiser is actually speaking to us, we allow the promise to supersede the promiser. Now I want you to understand how Abraham was a man of faith. And why he is known as a father of faith, because even though God had promised him that through Isaac, watch this, 
through Isaac, his, he would become a father of a great nation. So we got to understand that when God makes a promise to us, no matter what it looks like, even if it seems like God is changing the plan, he's not changing his plan. He's just changing your plan or how you thought it would come out. God doesn't work in our ways. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. We need to learn how to trust him. And so this is what it says. Abraham reasoned. Now, this is Abraham's reasoning. He said that he reasoned that if Isaac had died, in a sense, that, that God was able to bring him back to life because God had promised it was through Isaac, this son in whom your descendants would be counted. So Abraham knew that God said it was going to be Isaac. So Abraham knew that he could trust God to do what was considered the unthinkable in order that, that God would somehow raise this son back to life. And then this is what it says. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead because in Abraham's heart, Isaac was already dead. But he had already reasoned in himself that, that God would raise him back and, and, and as a way. And in essence, he did. God raised him back to life because Abraham was just about to take his life. And so this is the thing that I want you to understand is that literally when God, now, now let me, let me back up a little bit here because he says that we, me and the lad, we're, we're me and the boy, we're going to go, we're going to go a little further and we're going to worship here. And then we will come back. Now, he called what he was about to do worship. How does this differ from our whole mindset of worship today? In today's believers, I mean, we sing songs that call it worship. We, uh, we clap our hands and shout, say hallelujah, and we say we have worshiped God. We go to a building and we, we call that house the house of worship. Abraham wasn't going on to the mountain to sing no songs with Isaac. He wasn't going up there to, to, to literally start worshiping the way that we call worship today. No, Abraham was going on the mountain to put to death the very thing he cared the most about. And he called this worship to God. Why would we think that we could go and sing a song that we're not even thinking about the words in which we're speaking and consider it worship to God, that God should just accept that? My God. We get into this mode of singing songs and sometimes we hardly even shed a tear. Don't even focus on who we, we were looking around us or I mean, uh, we're, we're um, I, I mean, even now, um, literally, I, I know that there are folks who are watching us on, on, on live during during service on Sundays and probably washing dishes at the same time or they're they're they're, they're probably trying to vacuum the floor at the same time or um, doing something else, maybe um, checking their Facebook. While, 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 while service is going on or while the worship is going, the, the songs are going on and, and, and thinking that they're doing God. Uh, I, I mean, if you're not going to focus on him, why, why even tune in? I mean, I, I'm just being real because um, I, I believe God is not, uh, not, not, not about playing games. He, he, he doesn't want us just going through the motions. Are, are, are you all with me here? You know, so many times we, 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 we think that we're doing God a service by singing a song. Do, do, do we really believe that that is what moves God, that God needs us. I mean, li he literally has the seraphim that are in his presence that are shouting out holy, holy, holy all the time that they shake the foundations of his throne room. And we think that God needs us to sing a half-hearted song to him and call that worship. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> are are, are y'all with me? So, this is the thing that we got to understand that the question that Pastor Cassie had asked in this is, is what will you sacrifice on the altar to gain? What would you sacrifice on the altar to gain? And yet our worship to God, see, Abraham, when he was going to worship God, was about to put to death what was most important to him. And yet we nonchalantly walk into, try to walk into God's presence as if we, God rolled out the red carpet for us to show up. And now God is like, oh, here they are. They're worshiping me now. And, and are, are, are we serious? We often lose this mind. We often lose the mentality or, or, or the way, this way of thinking that, 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 that God is moved because we showed up. 
And sometimes we forget who's worshiping who. May I help you to realize that God doesn't need your worship. Worship should be an automatic response to what God has done for us. Pastor, I thought today is supposed to be words of encouragement. Yeah, I, I mean, I keep looking over at y'all's comments and I'm seeing, ouch. But le let me help you to understand something. This is to encourage you. It's place courage back in you to understand who we stand before. Let us not fall into this mindset of thinking that we can treat God as though he's second class and, and think that he just has to accept whatever we bring to him. No. My God. He deserves the, the greatest and the and the, the he deserves our ultimate respect, our ultimate honor, and he deserves our attention. I'm amazed at how and even 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 you brought this up, Pastor Cassie. Um she's 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 still in here. But uh I'm amazed at how she brought up the foreshadows of, of Jesus and how this story literally pointed straight to our Lord. Abraham bringing Isaac um, was, a, was a perfect foreshadowing. Abraham traveled for three days. Jesus rose in three days. The wood of the sacrifice was placed on Isaac. Jesus had to carry his own cross of wood. Abraham was going to sacrifice his son. God sacrificed his own son for us. Abraham laid on his son or laid him down on top of the wood and Jesus was laid on the cross. Isaac rose up from the place of death just as Jesus rose up from that place of death. And the ram took his place just as Jesus, the Lamb of God, took our place. Can you say amen? Now, I want to show you something that I never saw before. Um, but um, when I was studying into this, uh, this is, this is amazing, um, amazing, because I'm going to go back to when Abraham first left, okay? We're going to go back in um, Genesis 22 and 3. It says, next morning, Abraham got up early, okay? That is is something powerful because you know when when god speaks to many of us we wait for weeks sometimes months you know you get those uh, the folks who say well god's been dealing with me for weeks about this mm. that's kind of rough that's that, that that's kind of a rough rough area because you know if god is speaking to you why would we not obey him and think that it's okay to ignore him for a week two weeks you guys understand what I'm saying? Because Abraham, right after God told him to do the unthinkable, he got right up immediately the very next morning and he left early. He saddled his donkey, took his service with him, and he brought Isaac along with him and he immediately went to go obey his father. Then he chopped wood for the fire, for the burnt offering, set out for the place that God told him about. Then it says, on the third day of the journey, Abraham looked up and he saw the place in the distance. Now in Hebrew, this phrase here of seeing in a distance is, a, is the word makome or rakome, okay? Or rakok. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a Hebrew word and it's literally meaning, it's literal meaning means when Abraham lifted his eyes, he saw something in the future about God. That's something amazing that, that they write in here. Now, I know in the translation, they try to bring it into an understanding of where we can take it in. But there's also a, a, a very um, significant meaning to um, in the writing where it brings us to this, um, to this, that when literally Abraham saw Mount Moriah, the Lord showed him into the future of how this would tie into his own son. And so um, Abraham says in, in verse 8 of, of, of Genesis 22, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. How is it that, that Abraham would say to his son, you know, when, when, when Isaac asked his father, you know, father, I see the wood and I see the fire, but where's the sacrifice? Where's the ram? And Abraham replies, my son, God will, re will provide for himself a lamb. Well, how is it that he could say that God will provide for himself a lamb unless that God had showed him in advance? He, he didn't take a lamb up there. He didn't take a he he, he didn't take a, a ram up there, and and yet a ram was stuck in a thicket. This is this is the amazing part. Okay. Abraham says God will provide Himself a lamb. Okay, when Abraham gets to the top of the mountain, it wasn't a lamb. It was a full grown ram. Now I know how we place the ram in the place of Jesus, and and literally yes. 
But I, but lo, the Lord literally showed him that it would be a lamb. Abraham caught a glimpse of the Lamb of God that will be sacrificed for our sins on this mountain or the Mount of Moriah, and will be given as our given as our, take our place, taking our sacrifice for us. Now, how do we know this? Well, Jesus says in John 8 and 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Watch this. Jesus says this, John 8 and 56, your father Abraham, speaking to the, um, speaking to the uh, Pharisees, he says, your father Abraham, or the one you claim to, to, to uh, be your father, he said, he rejoiced to see my day. And when he saw it, he was glad. What was Jesus talking about? He was talking about when Abraham raised his eyes, and God showed him into the future that a lamb would be provided for each and every one of us. And he rejoiced. And this is why Abraham called this place in verse 14 of, of Genesis 22. He called it Yahweh Yaira, which means the Lord will provide. We pronounce it as Jehovah Jaira. And, and so to this day, it is used as um, a proverb that on the mountain, the Lord of the Lord it will be provided and so speaking none other than the hill or the Mount Calvary where Jesus the Lamb of God will be provided for each and every one of us can you say amen amen now the truth the truth about this all of these all, all of this points us to this very fact that if God placed this much attention into setting up how he would save us and what he did for us. My God. That's how much our God cares for us. It shows us. It, this should be encouraging to us to realize. And so when we understand. That God did all of this. To sacrifice so that we could be set free. What will we withhold from him? How can we think that we would worship God. Any less. In, and, and sacrifice any less. In our worship to him, when God has paid the ultimate price for us. You see, here's the key. As Abraham, if you can get a picture of this mountain where, 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 where Abraham was, was, was in obedience to God, worshiping God, and his worship to God was obedience to the Father. See, this is what we got to understand is many times we're expecting God to do more for us than we are willing to do for him. My God. I'm going to say that again. Many times we are expecting God to do more for us than what we are willing to do for him. But this is the key to, 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 to doing what God has called us to do. And this is the key to also receiving the promises of God in our lives. See, we have to meet God in the middle. I'll, call it, I'll, I'll put it that way. We have to meet God. We have to do our part just as much as God did his part. And literally, it is us in obedience and doing our part that unlocks God's promise for us. You see, if you see a mountain, it, it, it literally God set this up. When as Abraham was climbing the mountain to obey the Father and to worship Him on the other side of the mountain, God was um, was leading a ram to come up to the to to the top. And so, as Abraham um, followed God in obedience, the Lord provided the ram and caused a ram to meet him right there so that the replacement could be taken care of and so that the provision could be made. But here's what I want you to understand. We cannot expect God to do any, any more than what we are willing to do for him. We cannot expect God to do more for us than we are willing to sacrifice for him. So many times we get into this mindset of thinking that God owes us something when he actually owes us nothing. And it is through our obedience to him that unlocks his promises for us. And this is the key we have to understand. Oh, my God. God blessed Abraham abundantly. He said, I'm going to swear by myself. Because there's nothing higher than I am. I swear by myself, I'm going to bless you. Because Abraham obeyed. I want to read to you one more one more thing is when God introduced himself to Abraham. And here's the key that I want you to know that, that I truly want you to get to. 
This isn't about just getting God to fulfill only his promises per se, because, oh, I want this or I want that. So God, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray so that you'll do this for me. This is that, 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 if, if that's what you're getting from what I'm talking about, that's not what I'm talking about. What I want you to understand is, is we have to meet God. We have to do our part if we're going to even receive anything from God, okay? And, and, but here's the one thing that I want you to understand. And this is the key that, that, that should truly help us to understand what it means to live for God. Is when God introduced himself to Abraham. Let me pull this up. I'm praying that it comes up. Give me a moment. You know what? I'm gonna I'm go off of I'm gonna go off of what I remember. Okay. When God introduced Himself to Abraham, He told Abraham this. He He said, "I am your shield," meaning I'm going to protect you, and I am your exceedingly great reward. What we gotta understand is when Abraham was taking his son up that mountain to sacrifice his son and God's provision was there through his obedience to God he received a revelation of God that no one had ever known before the whole reason why we understand Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Yairah is because Abraham's obedience the key isn't just to get what we want from God by just doing what we think is required the key is to understand that we obey God because we receive him. He is our reward. Can you say amen? This is the key. When we are in obedience to God, God will meet us. God will meet us there. So when the question comes up, what is it or what would you sacrifice on the altar to gain? Can I help you to understand what that gain is, that gain is to gain him. Not the blessing, but the blesser. Not the promise, but the promiser. Because when you find him, you have everything that you need. And God begins to reveal himself to you. You see, when you're going through things in your life, how would you know that God is your healer unless you've been sick? How would you know that God can provide for you unless you've been in a situation where you needed providing? How would you know that God is your protector unless you needed protection? And many times we go through things in our lives that we don't even realize that God is trying to reveal himself. I hear so many people are going through things in their life and they're saying, God, where are you? He is there in the midst of that trouble, trying to reveal to us that you are trying to do this in your own strength. But if you allow me to do what I need to do in your life, you will come to know me in a way that you have never known me before. You see, it's one thing to hear it from somebody else that God provided this for them or God healed them from this. But when you are going through it in your own life and God does it for you, ain't nobody can come in your life and ever take that from you because you know that God is your healer. He is your provider. Just as God revealed himself to Abraham and God knew that he is my God, he is my provider because he, my God, he provided everything I need in my life. This is what God is trying to reveal to us. So saints of God and children of God, be encouraged to know. What is it that, that we would withhold from him that would be more worth more? See, because when you try to hold on to something, that, let's go back to the yakid. What is it that, what is your yakid that you're holding on that you would rather keep? When Abraham offered up his yakid, he came to know his God as a provider. So many of us are holding on to things in our lives that we are deeming more important than our God. 
But if we would learn to release that yakid, just as God released his yakid, his, his son, to save all of us, but so that we could come to know who he is. The same is, what are, what are you holding on to that will prevent you from knowing who he is? My God is more than enough. And can I tell you that you've come too late to tell me, you have come too late to tell me that my God is not a healer. You've come too late to tell me that my God is not a provider because of what he's done for me in my life. And everything that Jesus has done for us, everything has, has only shown and has proven that he alone is undisputed. He alone is undeniably, irrevocably, unequivocally the Son of God and our, our, my God, our Lord and our Savior. Can you say amen? He is the Christ. He is the Messiah, the Messiah. He is the anointed one, and he is our Lord, and he is our Savior, and he is our Master and King. That is the God in whom we serve. So be encouraged, saints of God. We want you to be encouraged to know that when you sac whatever you can sacrifice, whatever God deals with you about sacrificing, can I tell you that the reward is greater than whatever you would give up. If we are able to lay it down before him, we come to know our God and our Savior, our Master, our Ruler. So I want you to be encouraged to know who our God is. He alone is God and King, and he is our everything. Amen? We want you to be encouraged. We want to pray with you. Mama. All right. She's good. We want to pray with you to let you know that, that we love you all. We want you to be encouraged to know that there's nothing that you, you, you should withhold from him. Because when you have him, you have everything you need. We want you to be encouraged to know that the God who took this much detail in our salvation. Remember, he sent his son to set us free. That if he took that much detail into sending his son to set us free, how much more does he care about us? Can you say amen? So I want you all to be blessed. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for all your many blessings in our lives. Thank you for sending your yakid, Father, for not withholding from us that which you would rather keep. But, Father, releasing him so that we could be set free, Father. Even while we were yet your enemies, Lord, you still loved us that much to send your son to die for us, Father. Lord, that shows us how much you care about us. And if you care that much about us, oh God, how much more should we be mindful of the plan and the purpose that you carry for our lives to fulfill? Father, may we live in a life of obedience to you, Father, that we will take our leading from you, Father, that you would lead us and guide us, Father. And, and, and truly, Lord, we thank you, Father, for protecting us through, even through this COVID-19 um, epidemic, even through all of these, all of what we're facing, Father, we know that you're continuing to provide for us, continuing to heal us, continuing to protect us, continuing to set people free, Father. We know, Father God, Lord, that that you are you are greater than 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 the enemy, Father, and that if you be for us, as your word teaches us, who can ever stand against us? So, Lord, when we know how big you are, Father, we have nothing to fear, Father, for our, if for our God is greater. And he has no equal because he has no rival. There's no one that can stand against you, O oh God. And we thank you, Father, to know that we serve the Almighty and that you care about us. Father, we speak your courage into your people. May we never hold back from you, Father, what is rightfully owed to you. And Lord, I'm praying, Father God, for renewed hunger, a renewed passion to not just go through the motions of worship, Father, but we would under, that we would understand that this is a time when we worship you, Father. It's a time to focus our hearts and our minds upon you. Not giving you a second class, um, meaningless uh, religion, Father. But Lord, truly offering our hearts of praise unto you and thanksgiving for what you have done for us. Lord, may you be honored. May you be always glorified, Father, in our lives. And Father God, Lord, we pray your blessings over your people. May they be encouraged and walk with you always. In Jesus' most precious and holy name we pray. Amen and amen.
We want you all to be blessed. Thank you all for joining us. Um, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for, for speaking. Um, we pray that this was encouraging to all of you. Um, we love and we love hard. And we just, we speak what the Lord has placed in our hearts. Because many times the enemy tries to lie to us and gets us to believe all kinds of lies about God. But, but it is the word of truth that sets us free. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So receive what the Lord has for you today. We, 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 um, Pastor Cassie and I both um, want, want to say how much we love all of you, miss seeing all of you, and even th to those in whom well, um, we have just uh, met um, via the, the, the live and the, um, on Facebook. I want to say God bless you to all of you. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May, may he make his face shine upon you, give you peace, and, and, and continue to pour out his favor upon you. We love you all. God bless you all. And we'll, and, and we'll see you next time. God bless.